Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. Check it out at carsandbids.com. This is the new 2024 Chevy Blazer EV, and it's a fully electric crossover designed to rival the big boys, the Tesla Model Y, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. This is a totally different design from the regular gas-powered Chevy Blazer, much more aggressive, and it has some serious muscle with up to 560 horsepower. Today I'm going to review the new Blazer EV and show you all of its quirks and features. All right, time for the quirks and features of the new Chevy Blazer EV. Now, to start, the Blazer EV, fully electric crossover, meant to rival the popular stuff, the Tesla Model Y, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Kia EV6. This is a vastly, quickly growing segment of the market, and now here's another player. But more interesting than that is the Blazer EV's trim level situation, which is absolutely bizarre and quite confusing. Listen closely, because I'm going to try to explain it. So there's three trim levels, the LT, that's the base model, then the RS, and then the SS, that's the top version. Now, right now, the base model LT version starts right around $56,700. Okay, pretty reasonable. And that base model LT comes standard with all-wheel drive. It has about 290 horsepower, and it goes about 290 miles of range between charges. Okay, sounds reasonable. Next Next, we move on to the mid-trim, the Blazer RS. That's what this is. The RS is offered with all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, and get this, the all-wheel drive version is actually the cheaper of the two. You pay less to get all-wheel drive. <laughs> Now, yeah. just like the LT, the all-wheel drive RS has about 290 horsepower, 290 miles of range. Or you can upgrade to the rear-wheel drive version. You get about 325 horsepower and about 325 miles of range. In other words, the all-wheel drive model is cheaper because even though it adds all-wheel drive, it's down about 35 horsepower and about 35 miles of range. Range. So if you get the RS, you got to pay more for more range and more power, but you lose all-wheel drive. Now, at the very top of the lineup, you have the Blazer EV SS. That's the high-performance version. It's going to rival the Mach-E GT and the Tesla Model Y performance. The Blazer EV SS has about 560 horsepower, 665 pound-feet of torque, very strong numbers, comes standard with all-wheel drive and about 290 miles of range. But wait, there's more. Coming in the future, there will be an entry-level base model Blazer EV that will have front-wheel drive. Meaning, yes, they will offer this with front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, depending on the version that you get. And, of course, that base model will be cheaper than the current base LT with its $56,000 sticker price. And it still gets more confusing because the Blazer EV shares its name with a gas-powered crossover Chevy also makes called the Blazer. But the two vehicles share nothing else. They're both called the Blazer but they don't have the same platform. The regular Blazer is gas-powered. This is electric. They have no parts in common. They are not the same size. They sort of look alike, but they are not related at all, even though they have the same name. <laughs> in case you weren't already confused by this vehicle, well, now you are. Okay, so moving on. The trim level naming situation of this car is tremendously quirky, but we must talk through the rest of its quirks and features, starting with the wheel. You can see 21-inch wheels here with six lug nuts. Now, in the past, six lug wheels have been reserved for heavy-duty trucks, but here they are in a crossover. I'm not entirely sure why they did it, if it was to handle all the torque, but regardless, certainly a distinctive element of the Blazer EV, and it means there's probably not going to be a lot of wheel options to switch.
latch into. Next, let's talk lighting. You can see a light bar across the entire front end, and it does little dances. Here's the dance it does when you walk up and start the Blazer EV. It recognizes you, it's happy to see you, and it does a little light dance to commemorate the fact that you're here. The rear lights also have a little light dance, by the way. You walk up, you unlock here, you can see the light dance. Not quite as cool as what you have in front, but still some sort of recognition, which is kind of neat. And by the way, one other cool lighting element you may have seen in front. Yes, the Chevy Bowtie emblem is actually lit up. The outline of the Bowtie lights up when the lights are on or when it's doing that light dance to greet you. It's not just a regular boring Chevy emblem. Another nice quirk on the outside of the Blazer EV is the charge port door, which is nicely integrated into this fender. You wouldn't necessarily know that it's here, but indeed it is. You walk up to the car, key in your pocket, you press these two little lines, as you can see, and then the charge port door pops open. And it's actually quite an event when it opens up. It doesn't just open like a fuel door. It comes out and then it goes down and it's a little bit of a process. And it's surprisingly large. But once you've got it open, there you can plug in your Blazer EV. And of course, when you want to close the charge port door, just tap on the little button that corresponds to where you press to open it. And then it closes slowly and robotically. But again, nicely integrated into the design of this vehicle. One other interesting exterior quirk you can see the blazer badge in back. The E in blazer was replaced by three blue horizontal lines. Chevrolet has done that on all of their electric vehicles. The Silverado EV is the same way. The E is three blue horizontal lines, and I guess that trend will continue on Chevy EVs until they have one that doesn't have an E in its name, and then all hell will break loose. <laughs> The other interesting thing about the Blazer EV is its sizing and dimensions. About 192 inches long, which makes it about the same length as a Toyota 4Runner. But the wheelbase is dramatically stretched. That's the distance between the wheels, front and rear. It's about 13 inches longer than the wheelbase in a 4Runner, even though the overall length is about the same. The reason for this is, well, no engine up front that you have to keep the wheels away from. You can stick them as far forward as you can, and that allows you to pull the wheels out and create more interior space, which is a big benefit for electric vehicles. And indeed, you get into the Blazer EV and you discover it is impressively large in here. The Blazer EV is about two inches shorter than a Toyota Highlander, kind of the mainstay midsize SUV, and yet there's a lot more space in the back here compared to a Highlander or a Pilot or a Ford Explorer. You got a ton of room back here to sit back, relax, great space for rear passengers, and no hump in the floor where the middle seat is for your middle passenger to deal with with their feet. It's kind of nice. As for the rear seat area, aside from all the space back here, nothing particularly interesting or exciting. You have heated rear seats, which is a nice luxury touch, as you can see. You got USB-C ports above that for charging your devices which I guess is also nice to have. And you have rear climate vents, which is also a nice feature. Not every vehicle in this segment has that, so getting a little climate control air blown directly on rear passengers is nice. Also worth pointing out this interior, which you can see is very red. Chevy says it's their black and adrenaline red interior, and they were quick to point out to me, you don't have to get it. You can also just get a standard black, but if you wanna be a little bit bolder, <laughs> You can, you can certainly do this and you'll have a lot of red. And next up we move up front in the Blazer EV, which is actually fairly traditional considering this is well, blazing new trails for General Motors. It's a fairly standard front seat cockpit area, nothing too extreme or experimental, but there are some items worth pointing out, starting with the center screen. This is particularly important because this car in this segment is going up against some of the very best in the business. The Tesla infotainment system, obviously Ford's new one is fantastic, even Hyundai Kia, it's all great cutting edge stuff, and this one, well, is actually pretty good. You get a big center screen here. Chevy says 17.7 inches, and it's fully integrated with Google, which means you get Google Maps, as you can see, and you have Google Assistant that you can use for voice controls. Take a look. Hey, Google. Set the temperature to 74 degrees. All right, changing the temperature to 74 degrees. 
Now, this infotainment screen is better than just having Google. It's also really responsive to your touch. It does exactly what you do, just like you'd expect from a top quality smartphone, and it's really intuitive to use. It's very well laid out and impressively customizable. These little icons along the top that let you go to various pages in the screen are configurable. You can put up there whatever you use the most, and not just a few things, but Spotify in ways you can put at the top of your screen so you can quickly tap them and go to them. It's a really smart idea. You often see configurable home screens with like three panel displays, but here the actual pages themselves, the shortcuts are configurable, which I haven't really seen before. It's a really neat trick to be able to do that. Another nice neat trick in Google Maps, when you enter a destination, it shows you by default exactly how much charge you will still have left when you get there. And if your destination is beyond your current charge capacity, your range, it will automatically select charging stations along the way, which is a pretty smart idea. Also worth pointing out, the map in this Google map screen, you can see, goes all the way to the curved edge of this screen. Instead of in some rectangular box, it's kind of a cool effect, and it adds to the neat look of this system. Now, there are a few other interesting quirks and features in this screen. For example, you go into the screen, you can adjust your drive mode here. Not particularly unusual, although in the custom My Mode, you can actually change what sound the car makes. There's a different sound for normal and sport, and you can choose which electric sound you prefer. And that's not the only control that you typically see in a dial or a switch that's integrated into the screen. Check this out. Your headlight control is integrated into this center screen, on, off, auto. Same deal with your power window lockout. You want to stop your rear passengers from rolling down the window? You go into the screen to do that instead of a button by your power window switches on your door panel. And even the dome light is integrated into this center screen. You don't turn that on by just tapping something somewhere. You go into the screen to do it. Now, interestingly, a lot of controls that other brands are starting to integrate into the screen, this car has as physical buttons, like the climate controls. You can see here, dials and buttons instead of a spot in the screen. Worth pointing out, the climate control can also be adjusted on the screen in the Blazer EV, but you do have a full set of physical buttons and switches instead if you prefer. You also have your windshield wipers on this stock coming off the steering column, not integrated into the screen. You can use them fairly traditionally. And your power windows, power mirrors, door locks, memory, all that stuff is integrated into your door panel with physical buttons, just like more traditional cars, instead of into the screen like some cutting edge new EV. Now, speaking of physical buttons, worth pointing out on the left side of the steering wheel, the left spoke, you can see here there's a whole blank section that doesn't have any buttons, and that's because there's more to come. This Blazer has adaptive cruise control. It'll slow down or speed up based on the car in front of you, but Chevy tells me that GM's Super Cruise system will also be coming to the Blazer EV, but not yet. Sometime early next year, apparently, but it's not going to launch with Super Cruise, which is is frankly a disappointment. Ford has Blue Cruise, which is excellent. The Tesla autopilot system is fantastic. It's a shame that this car is not launching with a competitive system already integrated and then it's coming later. And frankly, if I were buying these, I'd probably wait until Super Cruise shows up before I did it because that system is so great and it really transformed the driving experience when you're on freeways and long drives. Now, with that said, one benefit that the new Blazer EV has over some of its advanced EV rides is this gauge cluster screen, which is excellent. You can see it displays a lot of good information here, and it's impressively configurable. You can change it to show a full screen map, which is awesome to see directly below your line of sight, or you can have it show various other things, the music you're listening to, all sorts of car info, trip info, charge info, that kind of thing. It's all configurable and available on this screen. It's an advantage over rivals like the Mustang Mach-E, which only has a very small screen in front of the steering wheel, and the Tesla Model Y, which has none at all. The Blazer EV also has a heads-up display, which adds even more information directly in your line of sight, and it's nice to have that there. Also, another cool advantage of this car is the other screen in its interior, and that would be on the rearview mirror. You can see the mirror is, well, right now just a mirror, but if you flip this switch, it has now become a camera, and it's showing what's behind you. The advantage here is you pack this car full of people and their stuff, it blocks the rear window, 
video with the mirror camera you see perfectly behind you. You don't have to look through all these people in your car. Now, beyond all the technology in this interior, other than all that stuff, I would say this interior is nice or maybe fine. It's not particularly remarkable. It's not bad, but it's not particularly special or exciting or full of any other interesting features and quirks flipped it up there. <laughs> you have a wireless charging pad where, of course, you can charge your devices wirelessly. Nothing too special there, although one neat quirk about that, if your phone is charging on the pad, then the wireless charging icon on the screen will light up to show that charging is occurring. That way you're driving along, you don't have to constantly check your phone. Is it charging? Is it charging? The screen shows, and you can just look there. There's kind of a nice little piece of attention to detail. This little center storage area rolls back to reveal a couple of USB-C ports, which is also nice to have. I love the climate vents in here, these red trimmed circles. They look cool in the center and they're nice to see. And they especially look cool on the sides where they have this housing. It almost makes them look like jet engines or exhausts, even though they are in fact climate vents. It's a nice look for this car. Also worth pointing out, the Blazer EV does not come with a start-stop button like, well, most cars. Instead, you get in with the key in your pocket and it senses that you're there, and then you just put your foot on the brake and drive off. You don't have to press a start button or twist a key like the old school. It'll just do it and it's on when you get inside. Now, with that said, this little icon on the screen will force a shutoff if you want to do that. If you want to turn the car off manually for whatever reason, you can do that there. And this little icon next to it, this one here, will keep the car running for an hour. By running, of course, I mean everything is on. I guess the thinking there is you want to park the car and lock it with maybe a pet inside or whatever. You can keep it running, keep the climate control going, even if you walk away with the key fob and override its natural tendencies. But aside from all that stuff, again, a fairly standard interior, particularly for this price point. You do have some nice materials, some nice stitching and leather, you also have Alcantara on the seat center and the headrest, which looks good. But pretty much, I would say, for the low $60,000 price point where this particular Blazer EV RS is located, it's pretty much exactly the kind of interior that I would expect from this vehicle at this price point. Not too over the top great, but also not bad, just right. And finally, we move on to these storage compartments in the Blazer EV, and we shall start up front. To open up the front hood, you pull this latch in the driver foot. Well, you pull it twice, actually. It unlatches the hood. You open it up and discover there's a lot of plastic under here, but no front trunk. The Blazer EV does not have any front storage compartment. I constantly am hearing for automakers that people don't actually use these front trunks when cars have them, but they're still nice to have, and it's a little bit of a drawback not to have that extra storage. Now, with that said, the rear cargo compartment, you open up the tailgate, and you can see a surprisingly large cargo area in here, particularly for the size of this vehicle. The interior packaging is great, and you got a lot of storage. Your only real limitation is the roof height is not particularly tall because of the sporty look of the Blazer EV, but you got a lot of storage space, wide, deep, and there's extra storage under the floor. You lift up this latch, and you can see an extra compartment here and a very deep but kind of narrow extra compartment in the back where you got a lot more storage if you want it. So decent storage capacity, even though there's no front track. Trunk. Now, one disappointing drawback, you have a power tailgate here, but there's no button on the power tailgate to lock the car. So you push the tailgate closer button, it closes, but then you have to separately lock the car. This is a minor annoyance, but most vehicles with a power tailgate have a close button and then a close and lock button, and this should too. And by the way, one other cool feature worth pointing out back here, if you walk up to the Blazer EV with the key in your pocket from the back approaching the tailgate, it will open up automatically. You don't have to swipe your foot under the bumper. You don't have to press any button on the key fob, the tailgate. It just opens up. Now, this is a setting you can turn off if you don't want it, and a lot of people might not. But the benefit is if you're often walking up with your hands full, you keep it on, and the car opens up for you. You don't even have to do a thing, which is kind of nice. All right, driving the Chevy Blazer EV.
which is very exciting. Although actually, it's kind of funny. I, I remember when I first drove the Mustang Mach-E at the press launch event for that car. It was so exciting. Everybody was so, uh, wow, a, a Ford is gonna take on Tesla. This is such a big deal, oh my God. There was so much fanfare and excitement around it. And it's been a couple years since then, and there's not the same fanfare anymore. Like we have the Ionic 5, the EV6, other electric vehicles are coming. They started to permeate the culture, basically. And it's not really all that shocking anymore. The Blazer EV definitely does not debut with the wow factor just because it's kind of late to the party uh, that like the Mach-E had when it first came out and obviously that Tesla had with the Model Y and the Model 3 when they came out even longer ago. But beyond the wow factor or maybe lack thereof, let's talk about the driving experience. First off, the seating position is pretty high actually. I'm kind of surprised by it. I'm behind an Equinox, which is a crossover. Uh, also a Chevy, actually, and, and I'm sitting higher than that. It feels taller than that. Um, I say I'm surprised because when you look at the Blazer EV in profile, it looks long and kind of short in height, uh, long in length, and I think that that's sort of a visual trick. It looks, it, it's stretched out, if you will. So it doesn't look particularly high, but actually it is reasonably tall, and you do have like an SUV style seating position, which I think people like from their crossovers, does the sitting up high thing. Now as for performance, it's a little bit disappointing. 290 horsepower is not a significant number. And even if you stepped up to the rear-wheel drive model, even if you stepped up from the all-wheel drive to the rear-wheel drive model, uh, 325 horsepower does not seem like a huge number either. I mean, I, I'm flooring it right now, and it's like fine, but it dry, it, it's, it's accelerating like a crossover, not like an electric car, certainly not like some of the electric cars that I am used to seeing and being around. Now, there is one really, really great benefit here, which is the Blazer EV SS seems like it's going to be a massively good value. That car, it seems like it's going to be in the 66 to 68-ish thousand dollar range. And given that this is 60, you pay six grand more, you get the same range and you get double the power. That seems like kind of a no-brainer to me. That's like a pretty obvious situation. Some people aren't gonna want the power and so they're not gonna do it, but to me, it's like such an easy choice to just go and do that. As for ride quality, Blazer EV, pretty smooth. It's not exceptionally smooth. It doesn't like stand out in that category, but it's like driving, you know, normally and it feels comfortable and fine on the freeway. For a $60,000 car, it feels pretty much how I would expect. In terms of steering and handling, I think that's the other, not disappointment, but it's it's not a car, this car is strong suit. It's fine but it's not like amazing. Like you go around corners and it, it, it's predictable. It feels like a crossover, but my thinking with the Blazer was that they were trying to make like a SUV version of the Camaro. And the EV has this kind of muscular aggressive styling with these big wheels and the kind of muscly, muscly lines on the outside. They've been talking about the SS version, all its power for a while. And then here I am actually in, you know, the RS model, the mid trim. And it's like, again, it's like fine. It's not particularly like amazing in terms of its handling. Like it just kind of goes around corners like you would expect a crossover too. It has a little bit more stability, a little bit more road feel than like a Chevy Equinox, which is really just like awful and disconnected, but it doesn't feel like a really fun and exciting car as you throw it through the corners. Frankly, I think this is just a, a good vehicle. I don't know that it's necessarily class leadingly great, but I think it's certainly good. And I think when you add in Super Cruise and when you have the option to get the high performance SS model, then it will start to be like a quite compelling vehicle. Uh, and then you you definitely would put it up there with some of the very best in class, the Mach-E GTs and the Model Y performances, which is good to say and ultimately pretty impressive for a first effort electric vehicle in this segment. Designed to be a popular wide ranging car. And I think they've checked a lot of the boxes, particularly when you add in the, you know, the SS trim level and Super Cruise, which I think will be make this even more compelling. And so that's the new 2024 Chevy Blazer EV. This is an impressive crossover with some good technology and decent fully electric stats. And I suspect it'll be a hit among people looking to make the switch to EV, but they want something practical and kind of cool. And now it's time to give the new Blazer EV a Doug score.
And the Doug score is here, 59 out of 100, which puts the Blazer EV here against its rivals at the bottom of this list. Frankly, I'm not surprised, as it doesn't have much performance compared to most of these vehicles, and it also lags behind in standout technology, especially with no excellent driving assist system. The Blazer EV is a reasonably competent car, but I have a suspicion the Blazer EV SS is going to be the one to have, given its excellent performance, particularly when Super Cruise shows up.